Hello, everyone, and welcome to this past marathon analytics edition. We're excited you can join us today for David Alcimandi's session, Empower Your Business Decision with Vision Assured Cognitive Services. This past marathon features back to back live webinars delivered by expert speakers by the past community. This session will be recorded and posted online after the event. You will receive an email letting you know when the recordings are available. My name is Eric Romero. I'm from Pass HQ, and I have a few introductory slides before I hand it over to David. If you require any technical assistance, please type your, quest, your request into the question pane located on the right side of your screen, and someone will assist you. This question pane is also where you may ask questions throughout the presentation. Feel free to enter your questions at any time, and once we get to the Q&A portion of the session, I'll read your questions out loud to David. You're able to zoom in into the presentation content by using a zoom button located on the top of the presentation window. Please note that there will be a short evaluation at the end of the session, which will pop up after the session ends in your web browser. Your feedback is really, really important for us for future events, so please take a moment to complete this. Keep learning year long. Visit pass.org and check out all the free educational resources available to PASS members. Connect, share, and learn. This session is presented by David, and David is a data analytics and cloud consultant at Wardy IT Solutions. And without further ado, here is David with Empower Your Business Decisions with Vision Azure Cognitive Services. David, take it away. Uh, thank you for having me, Eric. And thank you for organizing the event. So uh, it is actually awesome uh, to be able to kick off uh, this event. We have a uh, great speakers lined up today. So let's move on and have a quick look at our agenda for today. We're going to go through the Azure Cognitive Services Foundations. So we understand uh, high level what are the service for. We're going to dive into artificial intelligence as a service and containers. And we're going to cover pretty much all the vision as you call it the services today. We have a lot of demos, which is a good thing for us and for me, and I hope they work. Try to get involved. I always have this slide in all my presentations. Try to get involved with your local community or with the virtual, virtual chapters. If you have uh, time, just uh, stand up and give a presentation. A special thank you to uh, Leila and JK because they have provided a couple of demos that we're going to use today. Also, we are using one demo from Chris and Oliver that is uh, publicly available in GitHub. But Leila, and JK, they have been involved during the past week uh, preparing a couple of demos for me. So let's kick off. Uh, let's try to understand what Azure Cognitive Services are. And pretty much, uh, we're talking about artificial intelligence as a service. Microsoft is going to offer you some pre built models that you can start, you're going to be able to start using without further development. Let's say that you want to build a artificial intelligence model on premises. So you're going to need networking, storage, servers, virtualization, OS, middleware, and runtime. Then somebody needs to uh, make the data available for you and install the applications. A data scientist, or a developer is going to create a data model, machine learning model, then they're going to train it, they're going to test it, they're going to deploy it. And on premises, everything needs to maintain. So there is a huge effort involved to build machine learning models. With Azure Cognitive Services, the idea is that you just need the data and you're going to be able to start using them, taking advantage of their APIs. 
let's see that let's say that we have we want to answer a question we want to identify if there is a dog into a picture so on the left side we have our data sources we have our pictures and on the right side we have the azure environment so that is that we are going to send that picture to the azure cognitive services using the api and from the azure side they're going to send us a response in a in a JSON format. And this response is going to have a value that is going to tell you that it believes 50, 15%, it is 15% sure that that picture is a dog. For using Azure Cognitive Services, we're going to be using APIs. When we talk about, uh, let's step back a little bit. So let's just stop here for a second. Uh, if you are using this uh, approach, imagine that you need to send thousands of pictures per hour. So you're going to run into problems with the bandwidth, right? Because the pictures are going to be big. Maybe there are only a few KB, but if we are talking about pictures of a uh, hundred of megabytes or let's say one megabyte, but thousands of pictures, it, the bandwidth is not going to perform. Now let's say that you also have some compliance restrictions and your information cannot leave uh, your region or your country. So we have a few challenges with this approach. We can also, we, we are not able to control as well uh, the data model version, version that uh, they are using in natural cognitive services, right? Because it's a artificial intelligence as a service, Microsoft may apply changes to those uh, machine learning models, and you're not going to be aware about that. In order to overcome those limitations, we're going to go with a, a portable architecture, and we need to include uh, Docker containers, for example. With Docker containers, you're going to have governance, and control over your data, control over the model updates. It's going to be a portable architecture that you're going to be to, to you're going to be able to deploy to pretty much any device, and you're going to solve the problem that we had before in a scenario where we are sending thousands of pictures per hour. Um, what they need to mention: not all the Azure Cognitive Services are available in uh, Docker containers, but uh, Microsoft has been pushing really hard to deliver the new artificial, artificial intelligence models with Docker containers, and the old ones are being released uh, from time to time. If we are using Docker container, the approach is a slightly different. So the idea is that we're going to send from our left side, we're going to send that information to our Docker containers. Those Docker containers could be pretty much on-premises, in the cloud, in an in a IoT device, and we're going to get the response from those devices. The only moment that we're going to connect to the Azure environment is to report the usage. If you are a developer, you can use pretty much any language to start using the Azure Cognitive Services APIs. If you are a Power user, you can build integration with Microsoft Flow, Power Apps, or Power BI. We're going to see a, a lot of demos today. Uh, pretty much all of them are no code, and that's going to be great, I believe. When we need to, when we need to talk about privacy, pretty, pretty much all the generally available Azure Cognitive Services uh, cover, are covered with GDPR and many other certifications. There are a, a few main categories within Azure Cognitive Services. We have decision, speech, language, search, and finally, the one that we're going to cover today, that is vision. Within each category, there are subcategories. 
and each subcategory has different APIs that we're going to see today in the vision category. Let's go and jump into the vision category. The subcategories are pretty much uh, uh, six that we're going to cover today. This presentation is up to date. Uh, we're going to cover computer vision, the custom vision service, the face API, video indexer, and two of them that are in preview, that is the ink recognizer and the form recognizer. Uh, as a quick note as well, if it's in a preview uh, and it's not generally available, it doesn't have the same SLA as the other services. Within computer vision, we're going to be able to see, to tag pictures, to identify uh, celebrities or landmarks, uh, to convert handwriting to computer text. And without further, we're going to jump into one of the demos. This information is publicly available in GitHub and it has been built pretty much by Oliver and updated by Chris. So I'm not going to review much of the code, but the idea is that once that you download the Visual Studio project and you include, you build this project, it comes with a really handy application. Okay, so let me see. Okay, so from, can you see my application, Eric? Do you believe that? Sorry, Eric, can you see my, my application? Hello, Eric. Can you see my application? We are having problems with the Lord connectivity. Okay, let's try to see. There you go, I'm back. Sorry guys. So the Lord connectivity is not happy today, but I believe that now you can see my screen. So once that you download the GitHub project and you build a project,
I don't believe that you can see the Visual Studio application. There you go. Okay, I think. I believe we're back. Finally, sorry. So once that you open the application, uh, you have many options. And with this, within this application, we're going to be using the computer vision APIs, and you can select different modes, right? So the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to start the camera. Okay, we're going to go to the plan B. Seems that the Visual Studio application is not being displayed in the meeting. So let's go and jump into the next demo and we can always go back. Seems that with PowerPoint, we don't, we don't have any challenges. So let's go on with the custom vision. So what happened with the computer uh, APIs is that they don't cover all the uh, all the business requirements that you may have. You may have a scenario where you are looking at identifying a specific objects within a pictures. And because Microsoft offers pre-built models, you're not going to be able to enjoy, uh, to use the computer vision one. With the custom vision, you're going to be able to build your own uh, image object identification uh, model. So let's go, uh, there is a, a specific portal for custom vision. And the idea is that you're going to upload your pictures, then you're going to train your model, you're going to test it, and you're going to be able to deploy it after that. When you're creating the custom vision project, you can choose bet between two different project types, the image classification, and the object detection, and two classification types as well, the multi-level or the multi-class that we're going to review. It comes with some pre-built models that are optimized for some areas as the generic is not optimized to any area, but you have the food, the, food, the landmark, landmark, and the retail models. You also have compact domains, and you're going to be able to deploy those compact domains to portable architectures, such as Docker container. Let's go and jump into the portal. Okay, within the custom vision uh, website, once that we create a new project, we're going to specify a name for the project. We want to uh, specify the resource group that we want to use, the project type, the classification, and the domain. I'm going to create in this scenario a general compact domain. And our main goal for this uh, project is to uh, identify if in a picture there is a Vegemite or or jam. OK, 
okay, Vegemite is, is a really uh, popular breakfast type of jam here in Australia. We're going to add pictures. And you need uh, 15 pictures per tag. So we are the first 15 pictures. We upload the pictures. And then you're going to be able to tag the images. And we're going to be able to do the same. So we have 15 pictures for them, and we'll do the same for Betamine. Because I already have a pre-built model, I can go back. And we see that we have this model, and I have tagged all the information. And this model has been deployed as well to Azure Quantity Services. So let's focus, uh, we're going to focus in this demo from here. So we have a, pre a model built in custom vision. We're going to upload pictures to Azure Blob Storage. And then I want to show you a solution with Logic Apps to push information to Power BI. The idea is that once uh, an application or a user uploads a picture to Azure Blob Storage, we're going to identify if that picture is a, contains JAM or Pagemite, and we're going to insert the row in Power BI. Within the Azure environment, we have the Blob Trash account and the Logix apps application that we're going to use. And this is the Azure Cognitive Services where our model has been deployed. We're going to review the solution in Logic Apps. Um, I'll explain the solution from here. So the idea, when a blob is added, we're going to get the content of that blob, that is the picture content, and we're going to send that picture to our model that we have created. Then, because the response of the Azure Cognitive Services is going to be a JSON format, we are going to parse that information, and finally, we're going to make some decisions. So we're going to say that if the probability of the data model result is greater than 
once that we add a row in blob storage, a file in blob storage, we're going to send that information to Power BI. So we grab any of these files. And we're going to go back directly to Power BI. We have this dashboard from here. And you can see that it has inserted the row already. Let's see if we upload a different file. Right now, the information is going to be processed in Logic Apps, and we can monitor that execution. And we can see that at 1.27, it has been processed. If I go back to the Power BI report, I have my new row. You can just imagine uh, the business logic and rules and benefits that you can take advantage of this service and this solution or any data integration. Now let's say that we add one file that is not a, a jelly or Vegemite. Let's say that is an ice cream. Let's, let's add an ice cream, a Vegemite first, and we'll push the ice cream as well. This is Azure Storage Explorer. If I refresh, you will see the files here. If I go back to Power BI, you see that we have the information from the Vegemite picture. But if I check at the Logic Apps executions, possibly a this one from here. You will see that this picture that is the ice cream it has not been included in Power BI because the condition it's false. Great. So let's go back to the slides. We just showcased uh, an integration that pretty much is uh, no code. Because even when you are working with Logic Apps, Logic Apps is pretty much owned by IT, but it's quite similar to Microsoft Flow. You are going to be a you are able to build the same solution with Microsoft Flow. And maybe instead of using Azure Blob Storage, maybe you use a OneDrive or SharePoint. Let's move on to the next category, the Face API. Okay. As you can see, you can imagine this is pretty much self-descriptive. You're going to be able to identify uh, faces in a picture, also to uh, people, emotions, uh, as well as to use the similar faces recognition. For this demo, I need to say uh, it is no code because JK built pretty much uh, all the Postman solution that works with the API. So what we're going to try to achieve if the Visual Studio project works is to create a face identity in the face API. And JK has been built the solution in Postman. So if I go to Postman, you can see that we have 
the collections on the left side. And the idea is that uh, in order to create a face identity, the first thing that we need to do is to create a group. The second one is that we're going to add a person to a group, to that group. Then we're going to update that person with the face. And then we're going to train, finally train the group. And we, we're going to build the identity doing those uh, four steps. Okay, uh, let's just step back a little bit. This is the demo before. The idea is that uh, this is computer vision. So if I start the camera, I'm going to start sending pictures to the cloud environment. Let's go with the face API one. It seems that because we are trying to execute another Visual Studio solution, it does not work. I will continue. This, this is, I don't know, I'm not sure if it's the Go Meeting application or it is a Visual Studio 2019 or the combination of both. But if I show the Postman solution, We we'll continue with the postman solution. Okay, so the idea is that uh, we need to create a group. That's the first step. Um, uh, this is uh, JK has built this solution. It's pretty much no code. If we want to build a solution, we just need to specify a name in the body, and we're going to be able with postman to send this request to the API. And we'll see if we leave the group, it already exists. Then the second step, we need to create a person. And we'll follow the same step. So in the body, we create one person and we send the request to the application. Then we can update uh, the person and add the face feature in the same call. Uh, for example, if we want to add some information to a specific user, such as the role, or it could be pretty much a JSON value here, we can list now the people, these people will get the users, but you can see that the persisted persisted face ID is null. So we haven't uh, included a face at this stage. And the idea is that we want to add 
a profile picture, for example, we send this picture. And we have, uh, there is only one more step to go, that is we have created a group, we have created a person, updated, we have added the face, now we need to train the group. And we have just created a face identity. For now, we are going to skip the Visual, Visual Studio demos. Let's continue with the next one. The next category is Visual Video Indexer. And Video Indexer pretty much is a combination of uh, many of the Azure Cognitive Services. It has its own portal as well, that is videoindexer.ai. And it comes with around uh, 30 APIs. It is a one shop stop for using all the services through a video. Within the video indexer, once that you upload the videos to your account, we're going to be able to take advantage of uh, the all the APIs that we've seen before. So if I open any of these videos, Okay, so let's go to video indexer. We select any of these videos. And after indexing the videos, you're going to be able to get the transcript for different languages to identify emotions of the of the video and this one have a look i'm going to turn off the volume we can also see the within the timeline we have all the information but we can easily change the language And from the language point of view, we're going to be able to download this transcript, okay? And besides that, we are using an API, uh, the web-based application. You're going to be able to get this information using the APIs. Within the video indexer, you're not only going to be able to uh, search a specific video here. You're going to be able to identify a person, ce celebrities, emotions, uh, objects just by using the the search box over here uh, we have a few soccer videos so if we try to find a video that contains maradona you will see that video indexer ha has classified all the different points where maradona appears and you can see as well the result types so if we look at the name entity, you see that it is named many times in this video, as well as the person is there. Uh, in the second video, you can see that it's a spoken test. So let's try to open any of these ones. Okay, you can see that uh, how many times Maradona appears in the video, up to during 4% of the video. And if we play next, 
pretty much if you're going to find the next point of the video with Madonna appears. It comes with some features of media services. As I, I, as I said before, this is a combination of uh, many of the cognitive services APIs and it comes under the vision category because the idea is to take advantage of the video uh, indexer. But when we're running the face API uh, cognitive services, pretty much what it's doing is capture, capturing a photo frame from the video and sending that photo frame to the face API. Let's go back. We, we still have uh, two more categories to go, and then we may spend time trying to have a look at the Visual Studio solutions. But uh, Ink Recognizer is a preview subcategory, and the idea is that it's going to allow you to recognize digital ink and handwriting, uh, as well as uh, some some common shapes. It is a maybe not as mature as uh, identifying uh, 40 shapes, only a small subset of shapes, but it's available in 50 languages. The main shapes, shapes that you can identify uh, are in the screen right now. The one that I'm missing a lot from a, a architect position point of view is a drawing a line. Let's go and have a look at the Ink API just by testing it in the actual website. All the services come with a free tier, so you're going to be able, after the session, after the, the past marathon event, to go and create a, any of the Azure Cognitive services, not only the vision category, and start using them. So with a sample here, if we want to run, we want to identify word pass marathon. And you can also uh, draw any of the shapes that we've seen before. I believe that 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 always going to come as a rectangle, but let's see. There you go. So it has identified the text that is digital ink as well as the shape at the bottom. And we're going to, to the final category that is a form recognition. And we're going to see at this one from a power platform point of view. It comes with a, with a pre-built model as well as you're going to be able to build custom models. And it's going to extract the key value pairs from the tables in the document. There are some limitations around the sizing uh, of the PDF of the files that you want to use in the form, but I would say that uh, if you have a form that is uh, more than four megabytes, uh, maybe we need to opt optimize uh, the file before sending it to the Azure Cognitive Services. Just keep in mind that uh, if the file or binary file that you're working with is smaller, but without losing a lot of quality, uh, the velocity about using the services is going to be great. For this demo, uh, Leila has been helping me during the past week. Um, we're going to build it using the Power Platform. In this case, we're going to use uh, Power Apps. And we're going to build a custom form recognizer.
So if we want, we go to Power Apps. Uh, what we can see here is the AI Builder, and the AI Builder is in preview, and it is only available in the United States region and the Europe region. So if you try to build, use the AI Builder in any other region, you're not going to be able to see it at this stage. So make sure that you create an environment that is USA. Once that have, you have the, the environment and it's USA, we're going to be able to create the form, the form recognizer solution from Power Apps. You can still do this from uh, using any language of code, but from a Power Platform uh, point of view, any Windhead user or Power user is going to be able to come here, click Inform Processing, and we need to add a minimum of five form as an example. So we select five forms and we leave the other four uh, for testing. We upload the forms here. And the next step is that we're going to analyze the forms. And the form recognizer is going to try to identify common fields in that form. So we click Analyze. Right now, uh, it is analyzing, as you can see, uh, the five forms that we have submitted to the Form Reconnaissance API. It's going to come up with uh, some fields that it believes that are common between the different forms. And after that, we're going to train our model and we're going to be able to embed the solution within Power Apps. You still can use the service. Uh, in Logic Apps, for example, and can consume it from an enterprise point of view using Logic Apps and Blob Storage. But I'm just showcasing here that it's accessible to being a user. A user that is using Power BI right now or Microsoft Flow and only has maybe a license or and is used to use all the Office 365 stack, now they're going to be able to take advantage of Azure Connect services just by dragging and dropping the fields that we need. After training the model, you can see that it has identified three different fields. We can just select all the fields, click Done. And the next step, step is to train the model. Once that you have, we have created the model, uh, we can publish it, and we are going to be able to embed embed it in Power Apps. We can also run a quick test, but we're going to run the quick test from Power Apps. So we create a new application. Hey, David, sorry to interrupt you. We got about eight minutes left. So if you wanted to start wrapping up and see if anyone has any questions within the audience, okay? Yeah, thank you, Eric. Yeah, no worries. I think we're in, we're in time. Cool. Perfect. So we create the application. Uh, 
And from the application side, just by going to the insert menu, you can see on the right side that we have the AI builder. Remember that it needs to be in the US region. And we import the form processor. It's going to list all the models. And if we click play, analyze, it's going to try to find a form, include the form. This is a new form. The model doesn't know about a new file, but it's going to take advantage of the existing knowledge that created during the Um, you'll be able to see the information. So let me just run a quick test from here. And we'll wrap up and we go with questions. If you want more information about uh, this demo, uh, Leila wrote an excellent blog post about a uh, step-by-step. Right now, you can see that it has identified the fields from a form that is not aware of. Uh, within that, I think we're going to go to the questions. I um, apologize because of the two of the Visual Studio uh, solutions that didn't work. Uh, I believe it's not important. You're going to be able to uh, query the resources that have been attached in the presentation after the past marathon. And um, yeah, don't forget to leave your feedback. Um, please make sure that uh, you join any of the other uh, great sessions that we're going to have today. Do we have any questions, Eric? Hey, David. Um, at this point, we don't have any questions yet, but we'll allow people to um, start typing them. In the meantime, um, don't forget to join um, coming up visualization, uh, best practices for explainable AI with Jen Underwood. She's a great speaker. She's already uh, all excited and ready to go. So um, once this finishes, um, close your web browser. Uh, sorry, close the GoToWebinar and head over to Jen's session. Also, don't forget that we're going to have a survey at the end of this session um, that will pop up in your web browser. If you don't have time right now because you're going to tune in for Jen's, um, remember that Jen's has like a couple minutes intro. So maybe you can do that quick survey. It's really like a multiple option, super quick, um, super easy, and we really, really value your um, input. Um, it doesn't seem like there's any questions at this point. Um, someone did uh, mention earlier, though, uh, Chuba Oraka. Uh, they said, it seems that presentation, the handout, does not have the GitHub links in the presentation. Also, the links on page 14 do not work. So I don't know if you can share those with us, um, David. And if you drop yeah, it on the uh, chat box. Uh, about that one. Yeah, about that one, the, the one from JK, you'll need to query JK directly. Uh, he's going to be more than happy to, to share the resources, uh, but he has been working on it. And he didn't want to release something without documentation. Okay, perfect. Well, I hope that answers uh, Chubaraka's question. Um, it doesn't seem like there's any other questions coming through. I think that at this point we can wrap it up. Um, we wanted to thank you, David, um, a lot for your time today. Um, David is actually presenting today at 1 a.m. his local time, so thanks a lot, David. Um, and thank you, everyone, for attending. We hope we can see you at Jen's session. Thank you so much, thank you, David. Thank you. This, that'll be all. Thank you, folks, and stay tuned. Have a good one.